One of the arguments that I've heard from the medical community and you know, scientists and, and people in general is that humans evolved because we incorporated cooked food in our diet and probably because agriculture started that gave us the intelligence to kind of master the, you know, the seeding and, and planting grains and, and legumes and grow all those kind of things. So what would be your argument against that? Let's look at this. We got smarter because we ate cooked food. All right, see ya. But how did we get smart enough to eat cooked food? Right. <laughs> All right, so we have, we have to like look at this loop a little bit. Right. If eating cooked food made you smarter, well then people today should be even smarter than ever because there's sure lots of them eating lots of cooked food. But I'm not seeing eating cooked food making us smarter. No one is claiming today that eating cooked food makes us smarter. The paleontologists, the people who, who study what actually happened, do not agree with this we started eating cooked food and then we got smarter concept. They say, all of them in agreement as far as I know, say that the way that we got smarter was we found a denser food source where we could get more calories per bite okay. than what we used to eat. And that when, as we see with, for instance, key deer, key deer are white-tailed deer, like a Virginia white-tailed deer, but they're scaled down to the size of a German Shepherd dog because they don't have access to great nutrition but they're the same deer. Okay. But over time, they got smaller, smaller, smaller because there's just not enough food and the ones that were smaller could survive and it just got smaller and smaller. And so now we see key deer. We used to think they were a separate species, but they're actually Virginia white-tailed deer, but they're just really tiny. If we look at the Aztecs um, and, and Inca houses from long ago, humans from long ago, we see that the doorways were only five foot tall, that the steps were only six inches wide and six inches high because the people were littler, because mm. they didn't have access to great nutrition. Mm -hmm. And so they were littler. Uh, mm. And yet the paleontologists, as mentioned, say we found a denser or a more dense food source, more calories per bite of food. So you could find your food in less time and you could actually give the nourishment to the brain in order to allow us to reach the level of development that we were initially designed to reach. Right. But we didn't have that because we just weren't getting what we needed to show our full potential. On a, ca on a bite for bite basis, if you're in the jungle, you're out in the woods, wherever it is, you're in a primitive time, it's pretty green out there. And the reason it's green is because there's a lot of leaves. It's really easy to find leaves. It's not difficult to find edible leaves. Leaves are everywhere. But when you eat leaves, you do not take in much calorie. Leaves are the lowest calorie food you can eat. Whereas fruit will give you 10 to 50 times the calories per bite, depending on the fruit you choose, as compared to a bite of leaves. This is what I would call a food source that is more dense. So when humans figured out that they could eat fruit instead of leaves, they made a quantum leap in their development. Now we see this in other species, this exact same scenario plays out. There are species in, of, of monkeys living in the jungle that eat only leaves, such as a howler monkey in Costa Rica. This is not considered a smart monkey. If a howler monkey troop sit in a tree and you sit underneath them eating a sandwich, they've never seen a sandwich, if you leave and leave half the sandwich on the ground, they will not come down and explore to find out 
what they just saw you eat. Okay. But if capuchin monkeys, which are what we call the white face monkey, if a capuchin monkey troop sit in a tree watching you eat a sandwich and they've never seen a sandwich eaten in their life, if you leave half of that when you walk away, they will come down, explore, and see if that's food, and they will eat it. Wow. These are smarter, much, much, much smarter monkeys. So we see this, this looking for food source, denser food source, different food source, as a line of intelligence, a sign of intelligence. We see it play out amongst the anthropoids. In the anthropoid creatures, we, well, there's only a few species of anthropoid apes. And amongst these anthropoid apes, we can arrange them according to their genetic likeness to us or ours to them if you will and we have the gorilla which is farthest from us shares about 97 percent of our genetic makeup we have we have orangutan which has a little bit more we have chimpanzee which holds almost 97, 99% of the same genetic material as us. And then there's what's called the pygmy chimpanzee or the bonobo as some people refer to it. And, and these bonobo are our closest relatives, so close that a male bonobo actually holds more genetic similarity to a male human than a male human does to a female human. Wow. I mean, they are a lot like us, us like them. Yeah. They, most people say 90, 99.4 to 99.7, depends who you read. They have a lot of genetic similarity to us. Hmm. But we could arrange these same creatures by the amount of fruit they eat. And if we arrange them by the amount of fruit they eat, the gorilla being a 500 pound creature can't get out on the skinny branches very much. He doesn't eat a lot of fruit. He eats mostly vegetables, but when he can get fruit, he will eat the fruit. The orangutan eats more fruit. The, the chimpanzee eats more fruit than vegetable. The bonobo eats almost 90% of its calories from fruit, which points to a diet for us of more than 90% of our calories coming from fruit. Correct. If we arrange these creatures by intelligence, rather than by genetic similarity to us or their fruit eating what we find out is the gorilla is considered the least intelligent the orangutan is next the chimpanzee is next the bonobo most intelligent hmm. and then us the line is always the same the, the fact that the bonobo eats a almost exclusively not exclusively but almost exclusively heavily dominated predominated fruit based diet points to us eating even more fruit than them as an ideal species specific diet. So this is where we start on, a, on an obvious basis. If we're gonna use science as part of our rationale, then we have to actually look at the real science.